I would like to tell you a little secret about some of the pastors sitting over there. From time to time, if they're sitting with me, some of them might occasionally say, I really miss being an assistant pastor. <laughs> you know, when somebody complains, if you're parochial vicar, you say, you better take that up with the pastor. You know, what can I do? Or if somebody's mad about a policy, you say, well, you know, it's the pastor who did this, not me. <laughs> now, I want to tell the priests a little secret about these principles. <laughs> from time to time, from the ones that I've gotten to know over the years, they might say, I really miss the days when I was just a teacher. <laughs> At the end of the day, you give your best in the classroom, you go home. And if there's a problem, it's the principal's problem or the superintendent's problem, not really my problem. It's kind of fun not to be totally in charge. And I have a little secret to tell you about myself. On bad days, I miss being auxiliary bishop. And I served in the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese. The diocesan bishop was John Michael Darcy. He was famous for a number of things. One, they called him the late John Darcy because he was always late to any meeting. <laughs> However, he was always the last to leave. He had a true pastor's heart. He was also famous at any meeting, presbyteral council, anything like that, of I am the bishop, like we could ever forget. <laughs> he was a strong man, uh, not afraid to make a decision. He always spent a lot of time in prayer before making a decision, but after that he was unmovable. And as his auxiliary, uh, he would send me on missions from time to time. You go tell that principal, or you go tell that pastor, or you go tell that priest, or you tell Notre Dame. And I was the messenger with the message. And you know, really, it wasn't that scary. Everybody knew who the message came from. I was just the agent of delivery. It was pretty easy. Uh, and at tough days, I sometimes miss not having somebody over my head other than God and the Pope, uh, who's really in charge. In fact, in a very real way, that is the condition of someone else being in charge for every single one of us as believers. The Gospel of John, this time of year, every preacher will tell you, tends in some ways to be repetitious about the message. It goes on day after day, Sunday after Sunday, thinking of a new thing to say sometimes about these Easter Gospels is a challenge. But one of the repetitions is that Jesus came to do the Father's will. The words he speaks are those of his Father. His authority comes from his Father. And we, as his disciples, represent Jesus. We have a somewhat similar relationship to Jesus as he has to the Father. We are to be the Lord's witnesses. We are to preach his word. We are to witness to what he gave us. And we don't do this of ourselves. We do it depending entirely upon him. I think the principles of this diocese are really, in many ways, principal disciples of the Lord. In that you, in that great engine of Catholic education, are able to make Christ present, to represent his will, in the important decisions and in the little decisions you have to make every day. And it might be a bit of a comfort to know you don't have to be perfect to him. He is perfect. We are not. As long as we keep trying to be a kind of icon of who he is and what he is all about. The great example of that being kind of an assistant Jesus is the Eucharist. Something as ordinary as bread and wine, through the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, truly, substantially makes Christ present. As 
Every priest can tell you oftentimes that bread has been sitting in the bottom drawer of the sacristy. It's stale, it crumbles, it is not high quality even for unleavened bread. But it bears Christ's presence and through Christ's will, through the Holy Spirit. The wine is always of the sweetest variety because it too has to survive in cabinets, hot days, uh, so that it not turn rancid. It's not the kind of wine you'd serve at a fancy dinner. Pretty ordinary stuff. But through God, through the will of the Father, through the power of Christ and the Holy Spirit, it truly bears His glory, His presence, and becomes our consolation here on earth. Now what happens in the Eucharist happens infallibly. What happens in us happens conditionally on our cooperation with grace. So, look forward to the summer. Savor every moment when it arrives. Get all charged up again to be in the good fight next year, next academic year. But remember, it is the Lord who works through you. And in the end, Christ always wins.